Hey everyone, so as you know, this um, tutorial series is all about creating an organized workspace in Photoshop and that is going to spark joy for 2019 and help us to um, be more efficient, create faster, create better, and when everything is organized and in place, it's just amazing how much faster and better your workflow can be. And that's the really important thing. And when you're not searching for things and looking all over, um, it's just 100% better. And I actually spend a little bit of time every day making sure that my Photoshop brushes are organized. I'm, you know, as you know, I'm always making new ones. So I have to keep things very organized because Photoshop brushes is one of the most essential parts of my workflow. So I'm just gonna show you how I have my Photoshop brushes organized and you can take some ideas from that and adapt it to your different workflow. So um, as I mentioned in my other video, my tool presets I use for project specific and watch that video and you'll understand what I mean by project specific. But my Photoshop brushes, I like to keep um, in order uh, in this, you know, keep the groups together and all of that. So I'm just going to go down through my brushes and show you what I have here. Now, some, most of them are my own creation. Sometimes I use some other brushes. I don't use them very much, but I, I do have them. So, uh, I have some, I have some basics here and, you know, with this, with Photoshop CC, it allows you to organize things into folders and that's, is actually very, very useful. And I use this all of the time. There are some different limitations that I'm going to talk about later, but um, as we look here, I have some basic brushes and I have gone through and organized my different brushes from other people into different um, categories. I've got some essentials, watercolors, dry media, paint and ink, some rough paint, airbrush, and watercolors. And I've organized them and I've actually created some... Uh, sheets that I have some proofs that I can go and I can look at my different brushes but that's my basics and then I have some palettes and these are different palette makers that I have that I use to create the palettes for the impressionist brushes and whatnot um, and then I have my impressionist brushes and I have I keep my main ones kind of closed and then I can open them when I need them but all the sub brush categories inside there, I have them already open so that whenever I open my impressionist brushes, everything's open. So first off, I've got my modern impressionist brushes, my big main, my first studio. And then I've got my romantic English garden brushes. They're in a separate folder. And then that leads into the Palm Beach garden party. And then we have the artistic autumn, which is not just for autumn. I use those more than almost anything. I'm, they're the best. And those are all of my impressionist brushes. So I'm going to close that folder. Then I have my wet paint studio. And on this one, because the wet paint studio, I always use them with the wet settings. I actually loaded the preloaded um what I have, you know, loaded up here into my brush panel is the, the ones that are quote loaded. So they all have like, there are, they're all loaded with a uh, metallic gold, you know, and then you can just use them for whatever. But normally with my brushes, like the impressionist brushes, I don't have them. I have just the simple ABR version here. I don't have like them saved as a tool preset because I might want to use them as like a regular brush tool and not just the pattern stamp brush tool. So it's just easy for me to just go over here, select pattern stamp, and then select one of my modern impressionist brushes. But if I had saved this brush and included the tool settings in there like this, then it's always going to be as a pattern tool. And if I want to use it as a brush, I go to my brush tool here and every time I go click here, it's going to take me back to my pattern stamp tool. So let me just delete that. So I always use the ABR versions and try to keep um, the ABR versions in general on my brush panel. But for the wet paint studio, I always use them as the mixer brush and they're not really that much use to me as like a regular brush. So I have them with the tool setting saved here. And so there is my wet paint studio. 
And then I have some product specific ones. So these are some of my recent product brushes that I use a lot. So I've got my under the sea and I can, these ones I keep um, not expanded. So I have them shut. I've got my under the sea brushes, my tool and lace brushes, my fresh from the oven layer style, uh, fresh from the oven brushes, paint pulling and my tribal ones. So these are product specific. And then I have work in progress, which I'm not going to expand those because those are things that I'm working on and you will see them soon enough. So I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. But um, for example here, one thing that I do, I, uh, I keep, as I mentioned in my other videos, I keep tool presets over here. And one thing that's really important to know, and I find it useful, if you're creating a new brush in this with this new... Photoshop CC folders, organization things. One thing that's an, annoys me actually is if I go here and I take this brush number two and I want to like uh, adjust it or change it a little bit, change something on it and then save it as a new brush. If I click like this, it's going to save it right under this brush, wherever you're at in this, in this setup which that is actually quite annoying to me in Photoshop. So if I click OK, you see, it's gonna save it right underneath it, but that's gonna mess up my Modern Impressionist folder and I don't wanna do that. So if you ever want to, you know, adjust my brushes or adjust your brushes and create a new brush, keep that in mind because I like to keep my sets all organized and together and if I just made this new brush, that's already messed up my Modern Impressionist set the order of it. I've got one, two, and then this random brush, three, four. I don't like to do that, so I'm going to delete that brush. So one thing to notice, if you do that, you take a brush, maybe you want to like change something just a little bit, adapt it for your needs, and create a new brush. What I do is I take my scroll, and I scroll all the way down to the bottom. Sometimes I can take a minute, and then I go like... Well, actually, it's like that's why I always use my tools for the project specific. But I would go something like this. And if you touch like over to the right and then go like this, it'll save it at the bottom. So you have to like basically kind of touch over on the right side or to the right of any of the brush like right here and then it'll save it at the bottom. So that's just a little tip. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, I just was trying not to open up my work in progress so you could see my work in progress brushes. But that's why when I'm making a new brush, yeah, I uh, or you can make a new folder and save it down below. But sometimes you just have to keep that in mind. Sometimes that the Photoshop thing, it's a little bit annoying with this new setup because if I click here, it's always going to save a new brush right next to this and that can mess up my file structure. So always just kind of keep that in mind or keep a folder at the bottom for like work in progress. And then whenever you're making a new brush like this and you want to change it a little bit and save it as a new brush, then go down to the bottom and click on that folder and then click it so that it's in that folder. So it's one of those little things that you kind of have to keep in mind, you know, and that can throw you off and throw your brush organization off. Um, and if you're like me, brushes are a major, major part of my workflow. So it's super important that I keep those very organized and, you know, in, in their own little, um, according to the different, um, what do you call it, products, you know, uh, keep all my modern impressionist brushes together, all of my whatever. And one of the other things that um, I'm going to tell you is for my All Access members, I'm going to go ahead and save like the ones that I have that are all my brushes. I'll save these and you can actually download my own file structure. So I'll have this available as a download so that you can download my Impressionist Wet Paint Studio and product specific ones and that way you can have a setup just like mine. The only ones that I won't include are brushes from other people and my work in progress brushes. And another tip when it comes to brushes is over here, um, I like to keep my like a brush chart handy and you could keep this wherever you like. 
but personally I use my Evernote and I create, um, I put my brush previews over here and I have, I create a shortcut and you could probably do this also create, um, have them in a creative cloud library but I like to use Evernote because it has a full screen preview so I can just click over to my Evernote and click over to my brush shortcut and I've got all my brushes saved here so I can look at my wet paint studio and go okay which one do I need right now you know and have a really fast really um, full screen preview of them and I've got my artistic autumn and so what you can do if you use Evernote is just drag those preview images that I have um, included in the product and create yourself a little you know folder of them in Evernote and create a shortcut and to me it's just super useful because sometimes I'll forget exactly how a brush looks and so I love to have my little stroke previews and like on my impressionist ones I've got my you know a brush stroke like this and then I've got more of like a filled in effect so you can kind of see either way you can see oh how is it gonna look as a fill in or how is it gonna look as a single stroke so it's really good and I have the same thing with my romantic uh, English garden and here's how it looks filled in and my main um, modern impressionist studio and then also how it's filled in. Uh, this is a good thing that I always forget but um, to change the flow on brushes is really useful and sometimes even I forget this because if you see here uh, when I take the flow down on the brushes here's an example and you see if you have the brushes as they are you've got really like a um, you see the difference in the colors is more vivid but if you take that flow down it really blends the colors more together and so depending on the effect you're wanting you might want to take the flow down on the impressionist brushes for more of a subtle effect like you can see it um, like for example here, here you see all the different brushes, there's all the different colors like really different and everything but here that's blended very soft together so it gives you another look and sometimes it's good for me to look at my brush cheat sheets to remember that and that sometimes I need to play with the flow because it gives you like a more of a monotone color but and that can be really nice sometimes depending on the effect you want and uh, yeah, so that's just a little tip and how I kind of keep my brushes organized. And also, I love to use Evernote to have quick uh, access to how my brushes look. Because most of the time I remember how they look. But some of them, like the Modern Impressionist Studio, there's so many brushes I can kind of forget. And then sometimes, you know, even with this little... Um, preview here you get an idea but sometimes you're like oh wait that one I really love that one so it's good to have those little cheat sheets so anyway I'm gonna have my my main brush setup available as an instant download for all access members and I'll keep that up to date if I add any new collections or whatever so that you can have exactly like my brush workspace and um, if you have any questions just let me know below and hopefully you enjoy all my videos and you know this year we can keep our Photoshop workspace super organized and we can have a really good workflow and it just lets you you know you save time every day and that adds up so whenever time is money so when you can save time you know you can get more done during the day and you know once you get your little system in place take a few minutes back up your brushes every couple days organize them keep them organized for your workflow your workflow is probably going to be different from mine so you know take the time when you buy a brush set maybe from somebody find the brushes that you use a lot favorite them you know keep them in a folder um, mark them you know you can change the names so sometimes you could put like some asterisks here if it's a brush that you use all the time just, you know, take the time to organize your brushes because it's really going to make a big difference in your in your productivity. And, uh, you know, when you're more productive, you create things better and faster. So, all right, well, that is it for my brush series. And just um, as I mentioned, let me know if you have any questions.